Unveiling the Rwandan Genocide, A Hundred Days of Darkness. The Rwandan Genocide, a dark chapter in human history, began with ominous signs long before the actual violence erupted. This introduction seeks to unravel the complex prelude, setting the stage for a deeper understanding. Rwanda, before the storm, was a nation marked by a deceptive calm. Beneath the surface, however, historical wounds and ethnic divisions simmered, ready to boil over. The country's past played a silent but pivotal role. April 6, 1994, served as the catalyst for the genocide. The assassination of President Habyarimana when his plane was shot down ignited existing tensions, leading to an explosion of violence against the Tutsi population. The root of the conflict lay in the deep-seated ethnic tensions between Hutus and Tutsis. These groups, historically distinct yet interwoven into the fabric of Rwandan society, became pawns in a deadly power struggle. Colonialism exacerbated these ethnic divisions, drawing arbitrary lines that would later fuel the genocide. The colonial power's preference for one group over the other sowed seeds of resentment, deeply altering Rwanda's societal landscape. The media played a notorious role in the Rwandan genocide, broadcasting messages of hate and inciting violence. Radio stations and newspapers became tools for extremists, spreading propaganda that deepened ethnic divisions and fueled the massacre. In the early days, the escalation of violence was swift and brutal. Across Rwanda, roadblocks and raids became commonplace as militias hunted down Tutsis and moderate Hutus. The chaos was not random, but a coordinated effort to exterminate. The global community watched in silence as Rwanda descended into chaos. Despite early warnings and clear signs of mass atrocities, international response was tepid. This lack of action remains a haunting reminder of the world's failure to intervene. Survivor stories from inside the genocide are harrowing testimonials of human resilience. These accounts not only document the atrocities, but also highlight acts of courage and compassion amidst the horror, offering a deeply personal perspective on the tragedy. To a point where if someone had said that this nation will stay a failed state forever, no one would have questioned it, because we almost died. There was a little tiny flame that didn't die, but Rwanda, by all practical purposes, was dead. We are talking about a million people dying at the hands of their fellow countrymen. And then you go back a few years later and you find it's the country that has been more reconciled than any country. And that comes because certain things were done. And women played the central role in doing that. Because, number one, like many countries in, in a conflict, the women more, were more victimized than anybody, the survivors. Because if you found yourself alive, sometimes you, were, uh, you had been raped. We had more than 600,000 women who were raped. Some of them inherited the children who were the product of rape. But I've been inspired by women who have done things even under the worst of circumstances within the country. When you talk to people in the villages, those are the people who impress me. The, the, the women in the villages who are now starting to use uh, the mobile money to do this and that and to see what they need to do for their children, you are quite impressed because they have this kind of agency and they don't believe that their womanhood, if I might say it, should be an impediment to their pro progress in any capacity. Women in Rwanda faced unimaginable horrors during the genocide, targeted not only for their ethnicity, but also for their gender. Despite this, many women emerged as resistors and leaders, playing crucial roles in their community's survival and recovery. The church in Rwanda found itself entwined with the genocide, its hallowed halls bearing witness to both acts of complicity and bravery. While some members facilitated the violence, Others offered sanctuary, risking their lives for their flock. Children of the genocide carry the weight of lost innocence, their young lives forever altered by the horrors witnessed. The tragedy robbed them of family, security, and the joy that accompanies a carefree childhood. The Akazu, 
A shadowy clique within the Rwandan power structure orchestrated the genocide with chilling efficiency. Their influence ensured the massacre was not a spontaneous outburst of violence, but a planned eradication of the Tutsi population. The Rwandan Patriotic Front, RPF, emerged as a pivotal force, transitioning from invaders to liberators. Their advance brought an end to the genocide, setting the stage for Rwanda's path towards recovery and unity. Operation Turquoise, led by France, remains a contentious chapter in the genocide's history. While purporting to create safe zones, many criticize it as a belated and ambiguous intervention that failed to halt the mass killings. The refugee crisis following the Rwandan genocide extended far beyond the nation's borders, creating waves of displaced individuals. Neighboring countries saw an influx of refugees, leading to overcrowded camps and dire humanitarian conditions. In these camps, despair was palpable as survivors grappled with the trauma of their experiences. The lack of proper sanitation, food, and medical care compounded the suffering, making the camps breeding grounds for disease and further misery. Amidst the turmoil, Rwanda sought justice through the Gakaka courts. These traditional community courts were reimagined to handle the overwhelming number of genocide cases, aiming to expedite the process of justice and reconciliation. The International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, ICTR, was another avenue for accountability, focusing on prosecuting high-level perpetrators. Its establishment marked a significant step towards international justice, setting precedents for handling cases of genocide. Rwanda's path forward has been marked by efforts toward reconciliation and forgiveness. Initiatives encouraging dialogue and community rebuilding have laid the groundwork for a nation striving to heal from its wounds and move beyond its tragic past. In the aftermath of the Rwandan genocide, the power of memory plays a crucial role in healing the nation's wounds. Commemorations and memorials serve as poignant reminders of the past, ensuring that the horrors are never forgotten and fostering a collective commitment towards peace and unity. Education emerges as a pivotal tool for prevention, offering lessons for the future and instilling values of tolerance and understanding among the younger generations. By integrating the history of the genocide into the educational curriculum, Rwanda aims to prevent the recurrence of such atrocities. The Rwandan economy, once shattered by the genocide, has shown remarkable signs of recovery and growth. Efforts to rebuild have been multifaceted, focusing on agricultural development, technological advancement, and attracting foreign investment, laying the foundation for a more prosperous future. Rwanda today stands as a testament to resilience and rebirth. The nation has managed to rebuild its social fabric and infrastructure, fostering a sense of national unity and pride. Efforts towards gender equality and women's empowerment have been particularly noteworthy, making Rwanda a global leader in female representation in government. Women's empowerment in Rwanda has become a silver lining, transforming victims into leaders and agents of change. By prioritizing women's rights and participation in the rebuilding process, Rwanda has not only enhanced its social cohesion, but also set a powerful example for gender equality worldwide. Art and culture have emerged as powerful healing forces in Rwanda. Through music, dance, and visual arts, survivors express their grief and resilience, fostering a sense of community and shared identity in the healing process. Media reformation in Rwanda has been pivotal in promoting peace and unity. New regulations and educational programs for journalists emphasize responsible reporting, helping to transform the media into a tool for reconciliation and nation building. The Rwandan diaspora plays a significant role in the country's reconstruction. By sending remittances, sharing knowledge, and advocating for Rwanda on the global stage, they contribute to the nation's economic and social development. The global impact of the Rwandan genocide has led to significant changes in international humanitarian law. The tragedy has spurred the international community to adopt stronger measures 
to prevent and respond to genocide and mass atrocities. Reflecting on the legacy of the 100 Days of Darkness, it's clear that the genocide's impact extends beyond Rwanda's borders. The world has learned valuable lessons about the importance of early intervention and the power of reconciliation. <laughs>